So speaking of everything changing, I am looking at the idea of spiritual alchemy this evening. And you know, whenever I address something like this, the word alchemy, say, well, how do people define alchemy? And so I went to Merriam-Webster, and where else does one go for the ultimate definition, right? And so we have a couple of definitions. Uh, alchemy is a medieval chemical science and speculative philosophy aiming to achieve the transmutation of the base metals into gold, the discovery of the universal cure for disease, and the discovery of a means of indefinitely prolonging life. It's also the definition of a power, or it's defined as a power or process that changes or transforms something in a mysterious and an impressive way. And the third definition is an inexplicable or mysterious transmuting. So you know, there's this idea of being able to transmute matter from one form into another that's absolutely fascinating. And that was so beautifully described by Tina in her song this evening. But I, you know, as I was thinking about this, the, the fascination for thousands of years, this idea of actually, you know, alchemy um, existed before this concept of trying to transform metals, and before medieval times, which goes back farther than that. And we talk about in science of this tendency of us to look at the world of effects as our source of good, and forgetting that any good out there in life comes from that nature of God's goodness in all of us that's then brought into expression in the material world. And so this, you know, this fascination of altering one metal from one form into another, like somehow that would demonstrate some kind of power that we have, but also the tendency to just take for granted and not notice how that power resides in us, and there's this transmutation process that's going on all the time, that in every moment of life, we can witness some kind of material transmutation because everything in this material world is in a state of flux. But, you know, this fascination of altering nature, you know, from one middle to another, how about how every moment as we breathe, just that air, that inflow of air into our lungs, sometimes somehow rejuvenates our physical bodies. Whatever we have for breakfast or lunch today is somehow going to take form as this physical body. What about all the changes in nature? We love the example of the caterpillar that transforms into the butterfly. Water can be transformed into ice or steam. I mean, all of these things are examples of transmutation and alchemy, and it's you know, amazing how this happened. I know, as a kid, I loved whenever my mother would either eat egg whites or cream, you know, to make whipping cream. Especially egg whites, you know, these gotham jellies to these things that suddenly became frothy and formed peaks, and, became, you know, the basis for making a souffle or a chocolate mousse. <laughs> I'm gonna go with sensory overload, but I mean it's there's all of this magic, we could call it, that happens all the time that we just take for granted. Now in science of mind, we would say that from a spiritual perspective, we are all alchemists. That we are constantly transmuting pure energy into human experience. Because we say the fact of all life, in all creation, including in each of us, lies God's nature. That infinite vibration of love out of which every form of goodness comes into being lies in every one of us, seeking an experience and expression of itself. And we're all imbued with all those attributes of God every moment of our lives. And we feel this drive, which is the impulse of God, the impulse of good, to 
express itself, to experience itself through us. And through our thoughts, through our consciousness, through our beliefs, the ways that we perceive that we can experience those qualities of God, we take that pure energy, that invisible impulse, and create human experiences. That everything in the material world actually originates in the invisible, in the impulse of life to create itself into form, and we are channels through which that happens. So we are constantly, through our consciousness, creating experiences, both positive and negative. You know, the more that we perceive our oneness with that infinite good, that abundance, that love, that, that infinite, ever-present goodness that God is, and we transmute that energy into experiences that are positive, by the same token, our free will allows us to feel separate from God, and the ways that we perceive separation from good, that we perceive lack, limitation, that we perceive I'm not enough, there isn't enough, this can't be, it has to be this way. Those are all ways that we take that vibration of good and we transform it into something that shows up as some kind of lack or limitation. The good news about this is that when we notice that we're creating things that are not positive experiences in our lives, we have the ability to go back to the original impulse for good and transmute through a shift in our consciousness, transmute those experiences into some form of goodness. Now, many years back, actually before I was even introduced to science of mind, I was introduced to a Buddhist practice, uh, meditation. Now, you probably had people in meditation suggest that if you're using the breath as something to focus on, like we often do, rather than just observe it, there's a practice where often you'll be say, breathe in love or breathe in peace. And then to, as you breathe out, release anything that is unlike love or anything that feels like tension that doesn't reflect peace, just release that. But there's an opposite practice that the Buddhists also practice which is to breathe in whatever the negative energy is, to imagine this space in your heart that is pure love, and to breathe in whatever it is, the, the discord, the hurt, the anger, the hatred, breathe it in to this heart space of love. Feel that love vibration transforming it, transmuting it into an experience of love, of peace, and then release that energy back into the world. And when I came into science of mind, I think I got to understand that concept even better through the emphasis in our teaching that God, that good is at the core of everything. Even the destructive things that we do to others or to ourselves are based on some impulse that we're going to feel good to do that or feel better. It's some impulse toward good and us not being yet aware that good is for all, real goodness is for all and not at the expense of anyone. But as I understood that concept, which also, you know, would be the Buddhists would agree with that when they have this idea of breathe into the love. There's this idea that there's this greater presence of love that is the absolute behind everything. I just understood it better when I heard it in Science of Mind. So there's this idea that we can always breathe in or take in anything that feels like negativity and transform it into something positive. I would label that conscious spiritual alchemy. Because as I mentioned before, you know, we're constantly transmuting that energy, that impulse of life to experience itself into experiences and based on our perception, the experiences may be positive or negative. We're always doing that. Often, we're doing it unconsciously. 
You know, we're perceiving things in positive or negative ways that shape our experiences into positive or negative ones, but we're not really paying attention to what we're thinking and believing. When we particularly become aware of the negative feelings we're experiencing, the negative experiences, and remember our power to transform, we can then begin to work on our consciousness to shift those beliefs that are creating negativity in our lives. And, you know, through our spiritual practice, through prayer, through meditation, through being of service, through tithing, through all the forms, study, and all the ways that we awaken ourselves to our spiritual nature, we can transform those experiences. We can look at where we're failing to remember the essence of God's love and goodness at the center of our being and call it forth as we remember that it's there. So I, I remember years back, it was, we were in the old sanctuary, which, you know, I was thinking, Tina, you've actually been singing with us since way back in those days, because, yes. Um, but Dr. Mark did a talk where he asked us to contemplate in different situations the idea of what would love do here? And remember, the, the idea of love is love is that pure vibration of spirit out of which every form of goodness comes into being. So out of pure, infinite, unconditional love comes beauty, comes joy, comes abundance, because every kind, health, wholeness, anything that has a sense of goodness about it comes out of that love. And it is the most healing and transformative agent of the universe. And so if we remember that we are one with a love, with God's love, that holds everything and everyone in a vibration of love, even when we fail to act in accordance with it, that it's an impulse that's for the good of all. When we remember that and align with that, we can learn to hold things, ourselves, other situations in the world, in a vibration of love and let that love guide us into ways to transform anything that is showing up as negativity into something positive. And so I'd heard that question and I was, the next day I was back in my, this was in my corporate days, I was in the lunchroom with several of my colleagues that we would meet for lunch and we were all commiserating about uh, another colleague in a different location that we all had to work with that let's just say we found this individual challenging. So along with Dr. Mark's talk, I had also around that time uh, heard this idea of engaging in a mental diet and particularly dieting, refraining from speaking ill of ourselves and others. Not always easy, is it? For those of you who did the Four Agreements class, the Be Impeccable With Your Word, not always easy. But I had a friend uh, that was with me in the lunchroom that uh, also was very much into metaphysical studies, and we decided to have the silent agreement between us to not join in to this speaking ill of others, particularly this in individual, to not be drawn into that, but rather when we heard that kind of energy going on to just be a presence, to hold this vibration of whatever dissatisfaction, frustration, whatever is coming from an impulse of people to feel good and just to hold it in love and to know that somehow there was a way for this to be transmuted into something good. We just kept holding this idea, everyone in this situation wants to feel good. The people that were feeling challenged, ourselves when we're feeling challenged, and the other person that we were challenged with. And so over time, as the weeks went on, because this went on for a while, we found ourselves really empathizing with the frustration that our friends and colleagues would express. You know, so we could be a presence that said, wow, I imagine that must have felt very frustrating for you 
I can imagine or I can understand how you felt hurt by that or angered by that. I'm sorry that you had that experience, but not to get pulled in to then you know, join in bashing <laughs> this other person. Over a period, I'd say of about four weeks, we began to see things shift where what, at one point we would have heard something like, he just doesn't understand us, what's wrong with him? We're shifting to, what can we do to help him understand? And as that energy, as we continue to just hold that vibration and know that there was an impulse for a greater good to be revealed, I'd say it was probably around a two month period when we suddenly realized the whole experience had changed that we all had found a way to work with this individual when they had cert certain ways of showing up. We would say, oh, that's, that's him getting triggered by this. We get what's going on there. Let's give him some space and then to be able to find a way to come back and work collaboratively. We weren't being triggered anymore. There was a real collaborative process going on. And this friend of mine that had joined me in this agreement to have this diet from you know, talking ill of others, um, we agreed that there really hadn't been any kind of big personality shift. We didn't, through this love, transmute this other individual into different personality, but they, we lifted all of us into a vibration of greater love and understanding and collaboration. So as I was thinking about that, I. I think, you know, I doubt that many people right now would disagree that we're going through times that are just a bit challenging on many levels. And I think many of us may be feeling challenged or unsettled. What if we contributed to the alchemy of transmuting that energy? What if we took time to align with the energy of love out of which all solutions and resolutions, all healings come forth? What if we were to pause periodically, take any situation that catches our attention as something negative, get still for a moment, feel that sense of love, God's love, that's greater than any condition out there and that is trying to find a way into greater good. What if we were to take the negative vibration of that energy, just invite it in to a space, an altar, a place in us that is love, it is God's love, and to just feel it transforming, transmuting that negative energy into greater love, greater joy, greater abundance, some greater expression of God's nature. That's the impulse behind everything. So ultimately, that is what is seeking to be expressed. What if we really put our attention to that periodically when something were to get our attention, just for a moment, just pause, and feel this vibration of love that's greater, that can take this and reveal the solution, reveal the pathway into healing. Just by doing that, because we're all interconnected, we're all one in the one, by aligning ourselves with that vibration of love, we contribute to the healing, we contribute to the alchemy of greater good coming forth out of anything negative today. And along the way, we get to experience that nature for ourselves at a greater level. So I'm going to invite us to just work with that a little bit. And so I'm going to invite you to turn your awareness to any situation that comes to mind where you'd like to see a healing, a revealing of greater good whether it's in your own life or it's in the world. And 
as you think of this situation, call forth from within you that vibration of love. Just feel it in your heart chakra. That love that seeks only good to be experienced and expressed throughout all creation. And whatever the negative energy of the situation you'd like to be healed feels like, whether it's a feeling of lack, anger, fear, hatred, despair, whatever. Again, feel that vibration of pure love, that divine love at the center of your heart. Draw that negative energy in. And feel that energy expand and start to dissipate, melt, unwind the negative energy, allowing the solution, the resolution, the greater good to be revealed. Know that as you do this, since all life is interconnected, you're contributing to the healing, the revealing of good out of difficult or challenging situations. And so from this place of feeling that vibration of pure love and infinite goodness that lives in, through, and as each and every one of us, please join me in knowing the truth about different human conditions that show up along our human journey and that some may be experiencing right now. As we absolutely know, for anyone who is struggling with the changes that occur on this plane of existence in our human lives, it may be a change that we weren't prepared for. It could be a change of something in the material world or maybe the passing on of a loved one, whatever. Let us know the truth as we hold that vibration, draw it in into this pure love of God, knowing that in God, nothing changes. The nature of God is constant. It is always there to be reshaped, brought forth in some new way. And that for those who are forgetting or not knowing this, that they awaken to this truth and know they are always interconnected with all loved ones on this plane of existence and beyond. And that where something has changed in this world, there's a new way to experience the nature of God that that experience represented. For those who are feeling any sense of dis-ease or discord, for all of those who are being affected by the pandemic right now, let us absolutely know the truth of that vibration of health. Let us feel its vibration and call forth anything that feels unlike it into the light for it to be transmuted and for the pathways for that innate health and wholeness that lies at the center of each of us to be revealed, that this vibration reveals the cures and all pathways into wholeness and well-being. And that is happening right now. Let us absolutely hold in a vibration of love those who are feeling creatively challenged, whether it be in career, in just not feeling that they are able to express themselves, that, that vibration of love that says each and every incarnation of the divine has something unique, some unique way to express God's nature. And as we know this, there's a transmutation of those experiences into experiences of being drawn into those places where unique talents and gifts are appreciated and valued. For those who are feeling any experience of lack and limitation, let's hold that vibration of infinite good, just infinite givingness and receivingness and know that that is the nature of spirit in all of us. And as we know that collectively together, that, that opens up the channels for those who are feeling any sense or experiencing any sense of lack and limitation. 
to a greater expansion of capacity to give and receive, to take in and generate, to be absolutely provided for in every way, and to be generous. And let us absolutely know that the core nature of each and every one of us is love. So for those who are not feeling love in some way, let us absolutely hold that vibration, call that experience of unlovingness into our hearts and see it absolutely transmuted into a greater capacity to love ourselves, to love others, to see love expressed in every experience. And let us feel that vibration of love that is always for greater good and set our own individual intentions for greater good in silence. we are feeling the impulse of God for a greater revelation and knowingness and experience of itself in these situations. And as we know that God is in every one of these situations, good comes forth. That is God's way. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth, and it's with a heart just filled with gratitude for knowing this truth. I release this word knowing it is already done in the mind of God, and so it is, and together we say, 